Hi guys and welcome to part 4 of my Alps restoration guide. In this video I'm going to show you how to lubricate Alps switches and I'll also be experimenting which lubricants are the most effective. Everyone knows that Alps switches will start to feel horrible very quickly with wear and or dirt incursion, but there is virtually no consensus about what lubricant is best to use for Alps switches or whether any lubrication even works at all. As such, I decided to get a whole bunch of different lubricants and try them all out myself in a controlled side-by-side -side experiment to finally get an idea of what works best. The original Alps lubricant formulation is a trade secret, so I couldn't get much more out of them than that it was, quote-unquote, JIS spec, probably silicone based. Because it appears to have been sprayed onto the sliders as a thin layer and subsequently dried out over the years, many people assume the lubricant they use is a dry lube and that therefore dry lubes work best on Alps, but I'm almost sure it wasn't originally dry. Anyway, we're going to test out both dry and wet lubes during the course of this video. So I've lined up a huge bunch from pretty standard to highly exotic and even some which I don't expect to work well but you never know and people are bound to ask about them anyway. The most classic keyboard loops are probably Tribosis and Crytox. Both of those are donations from MyKeyboard.eu who have supported the channel previously as well. Check out the link in the description if you want to buy some lubricants off of them. Apart from that, I've also got molybdenum disulfide, tungsten disulfide, silicon oil, mineral oil, silicon grease, lithium grease, and PTFE grease, coke lube, and even WD-40 and Vaseline. First, I'll quickly introduce each type so you know what it is, and then I'll show you how to apply them. Crytox is probably the most popular keyboard lubricant around. It's a DuPont formulation of Hefpo oligomers mixed with telomerized PTFE in an effort to make a non-fluid based yet liquid form of Teflon. Teflon has one of the lowest coefficients of friction of any solid and is chemically almost completely inert, so its application as a lubricant seems like a natural fit. Like many perfluorinated hydrocarbon formulations, it's generally quite expensive. A 5 milliliter tube like this, which by the way looks suspiciously much like a semen sample, tends to go for between $10 and $15. Tribosis is a similar perfluoropolyether compound designed by Miller Stephenson as a Crytox equivalent, except it uses a binder to hold the mixture together better. It's in a similar price range and available in two formulations, 3203 and 3204. The latter is meant for linear switches, while the former one is more suited to tactiles. This one here is 3203. I've also got some dry PTFE powder, often called coke lube, presumably because it looks like a businessman's breakfast. Using a dry lubricant as opposed to a grease, like Crytox or Tribosis, has its advantages, as the fluidizing agent or binder may not have the same lubriciousness as the lubricant itself. While this is obviously not a problem with a dry powder, but on the other hand, finely divided powders like this don't stick to the parts as well as a grease would. It's surprisingly cheap, I got this whole bag from China for about $4 shipped. Molybdenum disulfide is a somewhat exotic but well-known dry lubricant whose appearance is that of a dark powder, sometimes with a metallic luster. It has a very low coefficient of friction, similar to graphite, which you might have noticed is conspicuously absent from this list. But this is because graphite is conductive, which may interfere with switch operation, while molybdenum disulfide shouldn't have this problem. Also, you'll note that this particular version, which is called mollicoat or spin coat, isn't actually a dry powder, but a grease based on it. The reason for that is because I already have a dry version of tungsten disulfide, which is very similar to molybdenum disulfide, except better and more expensive. I found this little one Oz, that's 30 grams or milliliters, I don't know which, thanks to the wonders of the imperial measurement system, of ultra-fine half-micron powder for about $17, and that was really cheap. This should give at least as good a performance as actual dry molybdenum disulfide, or better. The brand name for this is Micro Micro Lubrol, or something. This is silicon oil, specifically M50 type medium viscous. Silicon oil is mainly PDMS in the liquid range. In the lab we mostly use it for oil baths because of its heat exchanging properties, but it can also be used as a lubricant. If you've ever worn a condom, you're likely intimately familiar with it too. The non-personal variant is usually quite cheap to get hold of. The classic alternative oil is mineral oil, which is a stupid name for petroleum-derived hydrocarbon vacuum distillates in the LLO range. In this case specifically, it's Edwards 19 Ultra Grade, which is a high-purity oil for use with rotary vein pumps. It's often sold in bigger batches, but you might be able to get smaller quantities of equivalent oils for a few dollars. In any case, this is just an example. 
Next, we have a couple of greases, which are distinct from oils as they're based on a liquid with a thickener to keep them in place. While oils can run off over time, greases are thicker and will stick better. This is both good and bad. On one hand, it'll likely hold out much longer than an oil will, but on the other, it has a much greater tendency to stick things together, so if you're not careful with it, you'll actually increase friction. The ones I have here are silicon grease, which is PDMS bound with fumed silica, which you can find in most chemistry labs, PTFE grease, which is the same except bound with Teflon powder instead, and lithium grease, which is a hydrocarbon formulation bound with lithium soap, often used in high vacuum applications. All three of these should be easy to get hold of, but the PTFE version will be more expensive than the others. And finally, there's the good old WD-40 and Vaseline. While thick, Vaseline is technically not a grease, as it's just petroleum jelly rather than a bound liquid, and WD-40 is actually a solvent rather than a lubricant, so I don't expect either of these to work very well, but we'll give them a try. People are bound to ask anyway. Also, I found this mystery tube of Spezialfett, which is German for special grease. Not sure what this is, or what to think of a name like that, but let's give the miracle formulation from my eastern neighbours a try. For the greases, so in this case the Krytox, Strabosis, Molybdenum grease, Silicon grease, Lithium grease, PTFE grease, and also in the case of Vaseline and Spezialfett, you'll want to apply as little as possible. Take a really thin and sharp brush, like this, and apply just a tiny bit of lubricant to it. Then, carefully apply to the main friction points on ALP switches. First and foremost, the slider track inside the top housing, and also the part of the slider that moves in it. Then, the contact points with the switch plate and tactile leaf, if applicable, and optionally, you can lube the spring stem as well. So I'll show you. Basically, I take a tiny amount here, in this case it's Krytox, and you smear that on the slider track. Now, essentially, what you're looking for is to put some on and then wipe everything off that you can. If you leave on too much, it'll glue your parts together and they will feel like ass. Really, what you're trying to do is apply as thin a coating of the material as possible, which is why a 5 milliliter vial like this should provide enough for hundreds of switches. Then, as mentioned, do the same thing with the slider. Make sure to cover all the ridges and nooks and crannies that are in the slider that it moves around in the slider track of the top housing with. For oils, you can afford to be a little bit more generous as oils are less sticky than greases and they have a tendency to run off a bit anyway. I still wouldn't crack out the turkey baster, so to speak, but you shouldn't have to wipe everything off as desperately as with greases. Something like... This should be fine. For dry powders like dry molybdenum disulfide and tungsten disulfide, the ideal application involves a thin coat that essentially fills up all the scratches and holes in the plastic. Powder loosely put in the parts will quickly displace as dry lubes aren't bound by anything, so you'll want to maximize the amount of von der Waals forces acting on your lube particles. Try to create a polished, thin mirror of sorts on your material, rubbing it in with a brush, and taking off everything that doesn't stick. This is pretty easy because everything that doesn't stick falls off very easily. Although I found that the tungsten disulfide sticks really nicely to the sliders just on its own, the dry PTFE really doesn't, almost everything just comes right off. So for coke loop, there's an alternative method. Make a suspension in IPA, like this, and coat the sliders in it like that. Note that PTFE tends to be very static, so you may want to discharge your spatula or whatever you use to scoop it up, because otherwise it might very well end up a mess. Right, like that. And then add the sliders to it. Close it tight. And then you can basically just shake them in it and afterwards take them out and leave them to dry. Note that you're likely to wash off whatever was left of the original lubricant if you do this. To coat the housings, I would simply dip a brush into the suspension and then coat the slider track like that. You can also use this technique to paint the remaining parts of the sliders that didn't coat very well during the shaking. For WD-40, it's going to boil down to either using a brush and coating the parts like that, or just spraying everything and hoping for the best. <laughs> Again, I'm not expecting miracles off of this. So I applied all these loops to different sections of the keyboard. So for example, these have been Crytox, these have Tribosis, these have Coke Lube, etc. After having deep cleaned the switches with sonicator top housings and sliders like I showed in part 3, and I tested them out next to each other, and this is what I found. I reassembled the alpha keys without lubricant as well to see how much of a difference the lubrication made at all.
I also used different amounts of lubricant to see how this affected the switches, an important thing to consider because it shows how great the margin of error is if you over or under loop them. However, in most cases, the difference was pretty small. Furthermore, I've got a good condition M0116 here with oranges. It's certainly not perfect, but I'd give it an 8 out of 10. This way I can test whether any of these are a substitute for just finding Alps bores in good condition, which is what I normally preach. The results were surprising, I'd say. Let's benchmark the non-looped keys first. I'd give them about 3.6 Röntgen. Not great, not terrible. Sorry, that's a 6.5 out of 10. Certainly not a board I'd use to show someone how good ALP switches can be. Before the deep clean, I figured they were no better than a 5, so at least the clean has made a significant difference. Note that a lot of switches are still clicking on the upstroke. This is a known issue with tactile ALP switches in poor condition. In the next video, part 5, I'll show you how to get rid of this, among others. Also, note that lubricating switches will more or less inevitably change the sound, and this is reason alone to lube switches for some. Of course, attempting to change the sound of ALP switches will sound like heresy to some, and indeed, in my opinion, none of the lubes produce a superior sound to the original. In my experience, to varying degrees, but invariably, the switches sounded more muted, less full, and more high-pitched afterwards. Finally, I should mention that the effect of the lubes dropped off sharply in time in some cases, so even if you lube and reassemble a switch and find that, wow, this is amazing, you may well find that the effect is significantly diminished after even just one day. This comparison was drawn up after 24 hours of lubrication, and I checked over the next few weeks to make sure it still held true. So let's talk about how well the lubes have worked feel-wise. First off, the Crytox and Tribosis. Now the use of Crytox with cherry switches is well established, but for the Alp switches, frankly, the difference is very small, bordering on negligible. They still feel rough, no matter whether I use an absolutely tiny amount or practically drown them in it, although the ones with larger amounts appear to bind more. The Tribosis surprised me a little bit. Although it's fairly similar to Crytox in terms of formulation, it feels superior. The increase compared to cleaned-only switches is about half a point, I'd say, so 7 out of 10. It's one of the more effective ones among the bunch, in my opinion, and it alters the key feel relatively little. The Coke loop worked only fleetingly. I think the PTFE just displaces too easily if it's not bound, like in Crytox or Tribosis. There is a fair bit of it on these parts, but after only a little bit of use, not much seems to have stuck. Of the heavy greases, so PTFE, lithium, silicon, special, and molybdenum, the PTFE actually performs rather badly. It probably gives the greatest reduction in scratchiness, but it binds by far the most of the lot, so I wouldn't recommend it. The silicone one performs best. In fact, the heavy greases are all relatively good at reducing scratchiness, but because they're so thick, they add noticeable weight to the key feel, which is exactly what I don't want in these otherwise light and responsive oranges. I'd give the silicone grease the best key feel, maybe 7.5 out of 10, and it's completely fixed the binding that was present in the switches, which is already a big plus, but it also alters the key feel more than the other successful lubes do. The lithium one is slightly more smooth than stock and makes the switches sound really bassy. It's the only lube that actually enhances the sound, I'd say, but it's such a thick lube that they feel almost glued. The special grease isn't too bad, but doesn't really impact the switches a lot, to be honest. The big exception is the molybdenum grease. This actually makes it worse. It's scratchier and bindier than the switches that have only been cleaned. It's pretty bad. It's also made them a lot stiffer. I really wouldn't recommend this. By the way, neither the molly coat nor the spin coat worked. The dry tungsten disulfide is a lot more effective than the molybdenum grease, and it's one of the easiest lubes to apply as well. I'd say it's roughly as good as the tribosis, although it's more expensive. It's relatively close in feel and sound to the original too. Of the oils, the silicon oil made very little difference. Perhaps it's already run off, as it's far more liquid than the mineral oil, and the mineral oil arguably made it worse. So don't get any of these. <laughs> The Vaseline and WD-40, as I expected, are pants. <laughs> the Vaseline is actively worse than the cleaned-only switches, and the WD-40, while it originally felt really good when I just assembled them, now feel worse than baseline too. No surprises here, but really people were bound to ask about them if I didn't.
So, in conclusion, yes, there are lubes that work with ALP switches. The best ones are, in my opinion, the Tribosis, Tungsten Disulfide, and Silicone Grease. The latter gives the best performance, but also changes the key feel the most. The Tribosis and WS2 keep the switches much closer to the originals. However, the looming conclusion overall has to be, none of these are as good as this 8 out of 10 one, and haven't even cleaned this keyboard. A new old stock one would blow even this straight out of the water too. So while you can definitely upgrade your ALP switches a little bit, if they're dirty, maybe not hugely, but still, I stand by my point that it's always best to buy in as good condition as possible to give yourself the best possible odds of your switches feeling great. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it because it took me weeks to make and it wasn't cheap either, but I think this was definitely worth it. Anyway, see you in the next episode where I show you what to do if your switches don't register properly, show chattering, don't click anymore if they're clicky, and click if they're not supposed to. Bye guys.